Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward, and I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James Grounded Family Bible Study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly, I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son, Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Numbers chapter 19. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, This is the ordinance of the law which the Lord has commanded, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they bring thee a red heifer without spot. So it's a one color animal. Has no spots in it. Where is no blemish. Nothing wrong with it. It's not lacking it doesn't have too many it's it's not maimed it's it's not anything wrong with it and upon which never came yoke this is a Jewish heifer that has never plowed never done any uh, work in the fields and ye shall give her unto Eliezer the priest bring it to Eliezer <coughs> There's a few people involved. That he, Eliezer, may bring her forth without the camp. She's taken outside the camp. As Jesus Christ was taken outside the camp. He didn't die in Jerusalem. He died outside Jerusalem. And one shall slay her before his face, Eliezer's face. So you bring Eliezer and the heifer out. And someone comes along and slays that heifer in front of him. The priest. And Eliezer the priest shall take of her blood with his finger and sprinkle of her blood directly before the tabernacle of the congregation seven times. So boom, 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 seven times. And the priest shall take cedar wood. I don't know if this priest is Eliezer or another priest. Shall take cedar wood and hyssop and scarlet and cast it into the midst of the burning of the heifer so what you do is you're going to put this heifer to fire you're going to throw in cedar wood hyssop and scarlet into those flames and the priest shall wash his clothes and he shall bathe his flesh in water and afterward he shall come into the camp and the priest shall be clean unto even so he's made unclean just by burning this heifer and throwing in those three things. And at 6 p.m. after he washes himself, he's made clean again. And he that burneth her shall wash his clothes in the water. Now, this is weird because let's look at verse 6 again. Well, let's, look, uh, let's go back to verse 4. Eliezer the priest. That's Aaron's son. Shall take of her blood with his finger and sprinkle her blood directly before the tabernacle of the congregation seven times. That's one. One priest. And one shall burn the heifer in his sight. Now, is the his in front of Eliezer or, or the one that's now burning? Her skin and her flesh and her blood and with her dung shall he burn. So that entire animal is killed. It's not taken in pieces. It's burned complete. All of it. Even the dung. And the priest. And the priest. It doesn't say verse 5. That one that burned it is the priest. That's, that's an assumption. And the priest shall take cedar wood. And hyssop and scarlet. And cast it into the midst of the burning of the pepper. 
So someone starts a fire and is burning the heifer, and then a priest comes along with cedar, wood, hyssop, and scarlet. Then the priest, verse 6, shall wash his clothes, he shall bathe his flesh in water. And afterwards he shall come into the camp, and the priest, verse 6, he throws in the scarlet, shall be unclean unto even. He shall wash his clothes. Just by throwing the cedar wood, the hyssop, and the scarlet, he becomes unclean. He's got to wash, and at even he set forth the clean. And he that burneth her, he that burneth, the verse 5, the one. It's kind of weird. It does not say that that one, and he that burneth her, is a priest. It's, yeah, it could be a Levite, but the fact is, it's not one of the priests. And Jesus Christ, who was killed for us, the, 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 the people cried out. The priest shall wash his clothes. But verse 8, he that burneth her shall wash his clothes like the priest in water and bathe his flesh in water. And he shall be unclean unto the even just like the priest. Well, anybody who touches a dead thing is unclean. Yeah, but when we read before, all the Levites, they're set forth, but we are not told that this guy is a Levite. We're not told this guy is a priest. It's just and one, and that man. When do we know he's a man? And a man that is clean. Now, this is going to be anybody. Anybody of the children of Israel. A man that is clean. Oh, wait a minute. Take that back. I'm, I'm, I'm ahead of myself here. All right. So he that burneth her, that's the one, shall wash his clothes in water and bathe his flesh in water and shall be unclean to the even. So both the priest and this man are made unclean by burning this heifer. They wash and they get clean at even. And a man that is clean. So it can't be the one that burned her and it can't be the priest. It's got to be somebody else. And a man that is clean shall gather up the ashes of the heifer. And lay them up without the camp. They're not allowed in the camp. In a clean place. And it shall be kept for the congregation of the children of Israel. For a water of separation. It is a purification for sin. So the water of the separation includes the entire heifer. The, uh, the cedar wood. The hyssop. In the scarlet, they put it into a jar and with water. And he that gathereth the ashes of the heifer, verse 9, shall wash his clothes and be clean, unclean unto even, like the priest and the man that burnt her. And it shall be unto the children of Israel and unto the stranger, whether you're Jew or Gentile, that sojourneth among you, among them, for a statute forever. Okay, that's all about the burning of the heifer. It's done before in front of Eliezer the priest. You've got somebody coming up that slays that. I'm trying to think right now. Where is it? No, he's the priest, I think. And one, verse 3, and one shall slay her before his face. That, that heifer is in front of Eliezer and somebody comes along and slays the heifer right in front of him. And then Eliezer takes the blood and he sprinkles. And then you got a priest that comes along and he, he puts, uh, well, you got, verse, he got, somebody's coming up and he's burning the heifer, verse 5. It's not Eliezer. One burns the heifer. Verse 5. Verse 6. A priest steps in with cedar wood, hyssop, and scarlet and throws it into where that animal's burning. And then he's got to wash because he's unclean. He, he that is uh, burnt her is unclean. He's got to be washed. And then a man, verse 9, is going to come and gather all those ashes. And then he's got to wash because he's unclean. Verse 10. Now, what is that water separation for? Verse 11. He that touches the dead body of any man shall be unclean seven days. 
So now we got a rule about death and a dead body. And a dead body, after it, after it's dead, has diseases. And the germs are still intact on that body. That body's going through a decaying process. It can cause death. It can cause other troubles to people around it. He shall purify himself with it on the third day. And that's the water separation. And on the seventh day he shall be clean. But if he purified not himself the third day, then the seventh day he shall not be clean. So now he's got three days. He's got to, he's got to get, get the water for purification. And then on the seventh day, he's clean. If he does not do the third day, then there's, there's no sense for the seventh day because he's not clean. Uh, whosoever touches the dead body of any man that is dead, and purified not himself, defileth the tabernacle of the Lord, and that soul shall be cut off from Israel. There you go. So if you do not get the purification rites of this water of separation from a dead body, you are considered a castaway. You you are beyond any any ways of being right with God. Cut off means that's it. You're done. Because the water of separation was not sprinkled upon them, upon him, excuse me, he shall be unclean, his uncleanness is yet upon him. And if he were to die with his uncleanness upon him, you're dying with your sins. And you go to hell. And what we're going to read here is when, when anybody dies in Israel, because watch, this is the law, when a man dieth in a tent. All right? Whatever it is, you wake up more and find out that he died in his tent. All that come into the tent and all that is in the tent shall be unclean seven days. I don't care if you don't touch it. In that tent is a lantern. That lantern is on the other side of where the, the, guy, the dead body is. That lantern is unclean. The man that comes in pulls back the blanket, you know, and feels the side of his neck or his hand for a pulse. That man is unclean. If he has a wife or a son that was sleeping in that very same tent, that person's unclean. The blankets, the cot, everything in that tent is unclean. And it's got to go through the water of separation. Every open vessel. He's got a glass of water. The other person had a glass of water. Which has no covering bound upon it. No screw on or latch top. See that bond? That's not like just a piece of paper over it. It's got to, it's got to be where it's sealed. It is unclean. And there's no time limit mentioned for verse 15. It's always unclean. That glass of water that, that's open. Unclean. And whosoever touches one that is slain with a sword in the open field, or a dead body, or a bone of a man, or a grave, shall be unclean seven days. Now, wartime. And when they go out, spoil the bodies. And it will be coming up pretty soon that they, in a battle, they will do the water separation. Uh, the dead body, any dead body. Or a bone. You find a bone in the ground, you pick it up, you're unclean of a man. Or a grave. People who would bury, and burying is a Jewish rite that they do for dead bodies, they bury it. Whoever does that grave is unclean. Shall be unclean seven days. The full seven days mentioned in verse 12, but on the third day. And for an unclean person, they shall take of the ashes of the burnt heifer of purification for sin and running water. Notice the running water. 
That's a very important medical detail that they did not know until the Civil War of America. Shall be put there into a vessel. And a clean person shall take hyssop. Now, hyssop is an antiseptic. I'm trying to read my note here. Antiseptic. Oh, I got to it right better. It's an antiseptic. That's what we do today with, with these things for, you know, 99.9999% germs. They did that back then. They used hyssop. And dip it in the water and sprinkle it upon the tent. We already talked about the tent. Upon all the vessels. Upon the persons that were there. And upon him that touches a bone or one slain or one dead or a grave. And the clean person shall sprinkle upon the unclean on the third day and the seventh day, verse 12. And on the seventh day he shall purify himself and wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and shall be clean at even 6 p.m. So here comes another person. You got, let's say a bunch of people were in the tent. They're unclean. The vessels are in the tent. That one person will come along, sprinkle the tent, sprinkle the vessels, and sprinkle the people or person. But the man that shall be unclean and shall not purify himself, that soul, for whatever reason, shall be cut off from the, among the congregation because he has defiled the sanctuary of the Lord and the water of separation has not been sprinkled upon him. He is unclean for whatever reason. Now, don't do that to me. No. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to wash my... Whatever. Whatever reason, it doesn't say. If the person doesn't go, whether he forgets, whether he doesn't tell people he touched the dead body, or had anything to do with the dead body, or anything like that. Now, that would probably go for a murderer, too. Let's say he kills somebody, and he definitely has touched a dead body. He would have to come up and say, hey, listen, I touched that body and it amount to his own guiltiness. And if he's a murderer, he's already double damned. Because there's no sacrifice for one that kills another man. And it shall be a perpetual statute unto them, the Jews, that he that sprinkleth the water of separation shall wash his clothes. And he that touches the water of separation shall be unclean unto even. So the one that sprinkles the water on the people, he's got to wash. And whatsoever the unclean person touches shall be unclean. So the third day all the way up to the seventh day, these people have to be quarantined. And everything they touch and everything that they do has to be watched. So they can get that water separation. Shall be unclean and the soul that touches it shall be unclean unto even. So let's say somebody died in their tent. And the person comes out of the tent, they, you know, it, it's up to, it's not, it hasn't been the full seven days. And he gets out of the tent and goes wherever. He's got seven days. He's still unclean. And let's say he grabs another cup and gets a drink of water and a fork and a, and a knife within the seven days to, for, his, for his food. That cup, that plate, the fork and spoon and knife, they are unclean. Now the person that comes along and say he picks up the fork and spoon and the plate and all that. And he goes and washes those utensils. Now he's unclean. So it has to be monitored when somebody has has been involved with death to realize everything that he comes in contact with and every one that he comes in contact, even by the things that he has touched, has to be. And God has set a strict standard that when you come into, I'm trying, I'm trying to figure out how to say it, when you come in contact with a dead body here under the law, you got to be isolated. 
And that's what the focus of a lot of these movies are today. I mean, oh, we got to isolate you. We got to keep them all away. The government's going to come and shut down this whole state, this whole city, this whole town. And that's what's happening here. And that person's life has to be watched to make sure he doesn't affect any other people. And that the fact is that if there has been somebody else affected by this person, and if that person does not get the water separation because let's say he didn't know about this person in the dead body, then he's been cut off. Right? Didn't it say, but the man that shall be unclean and shall not purify himself, verse 20, that soul shall be cut off from a, let's say he's a dishwasher of the utensils of the person who's unclean right now. And he touches those plates and he's just doing his job doing the dishes. Psalm says, as a man washes a dish and turns it over and wipes it. But he didn't realize that plate that he washed is a man that is unclean. He's unclean and he doesn't even know it. And he's cut off. So you got to be very careful. And isn't it great that we're under grace? You come to Jesus Christ. You get washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. And because you touch someone and, and you're unclean, you just go to Jesus and say, it's under the blood, Lord. And you cannot affect everybody in the whole world. Especially if a dead person. Today, under grace, if we come in contact with a dead person, it doesn't, you don't need water separation. But the law is so precise that, here we go. And some people, they're looking for that red heifer to be done, that they're going to do this thing on the aspect of, of Jesus' death, and I don't ever see anything else about the red heifer. Now, there's coming a battle in Israel, and they're going to go out, and they're going to kill and they're going to touch the dead bodies. And they're going to come to Moses. And they're going to use the water separation. But as far as anywhere else in the Bible. I have not seen the water separation get used. I don't know if this is taken for granted. And the Holy Spirit doesn't mention it. But there's only one other place coming up. That this water separation will be seen. 